Hey everyone, I hope you're all are having a fantastic day. It's Rizora giving you another Devil May Cry video. And as always, if you are new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching this video. Let's proceed. Devil May Cry over the years have secretly hinted things and has had its fair share of easter eggs. In today's video, I, Rizora, give you the top 10 facts you didn't know about Virgil. As far as the video game medium is concerned, Virgil is the quintessential rival character. While his presence in the original Devil May Cry may have been more in the background, but Devil May Cry 3 solidified him as one of the greatest video game characters of all time. The foil to surpass and ultimately defeat in combat. It's worth noting, however, that Devil May Cry is a franchise that keeps its juiciest lore in the background. Simply playing the games won't paint the whole picture, especially not for a character as enigmatic, as in-depth as Virgil. Devil May Cry wouldn't be the same without him. Nilo Angelo For most of the original Devil May Cry, Virgil is only known by the alias Nilo Angelo. Corrupted by Mundus in the game's backstory, Nilo Angelo is mostly devoid of all personality. The reveal that he was Virgil all along made the conflict with Mundus personal for Dante. While it is a good story, the Nilo Angelo name has a problem. Specifically, the fact that it's a mistranslation. Virgil's alter ego was supposed to be named Nero Angelo, but it wasn't translated properly. Interestingly, while Virgil's son is correctly identified as Nero, Devil May Cry 5 does not fix the Nilo Anglo mistake. Virgil never makes it past childhood in the original canon. Hideki Kamiya's original vision for Virgil was quite different to what fans ultimately got with Devil May Cry 3. Before Kamiya left the series and Inzano took over, the plan was that Virgil never made it past childhood. While Dante made it out alive, Mundus actually did kill Virgil when he was a child. From there, Virgil's entire adult life was spent serving Mundus as one of his soldiers. It wasn't until Devil May Cry 3 that it was decided to be a prequel that the first game's backstory was changed so that Virgil not only surviving the events with Mundus, him and Dante actually interacted multiple times before the first game. Virgil and Sparta share a musical motif. Dante's Sparta costume in the original Devil May Cry isn't just a cosmic change, it also bestows upon the players new battle themes. Sparta's personal themes end up taking over Dante's and, interestingly, Sparta's battle theme, S, lifts several musical cues from Virgil's main battle theme, Ultraviolet. Given that Sparta resembles Dante in both gameplay ability and design, it's only fitting that something unique to Virgil be repurposed for the Sparta costume. After all, the intent is to showcase Sparta as accurately as possible, 
It's natural he shares traits with both Dante and Virgil. It just so happens that the sharing only extends to music. Virgil uses Dante's character model in the first game. While it was Devil May Cry 3 that solidified Virgil as the quintessential rival character, he's had the role locked down since the original Devil May Cry. Capcom had always intended on Virgil actively mirroring the player, to the point where the developers used Dante's character model as a base for Nilo Anglo. In using Dante's exact models, the two could interact more interestingly in battle while also saving the developers time when creating Nero Anglo's model. This is also the reason why Virgil doesn't use guns in-game, instead, summonable swords were used as they didn't require a firing animation. Virgil was designed to be more likable than Dante. While Virgil's presence is felt as early as the first game, it isn't until Devil May Cry 3 where he becomes a more fleshed out and complete character. The goal behind his design was to create a rival more likable than Dante, a character players would love to hate while also just genuinely loving him. Since Dante's arc had him growing into a likeable character, it was important the audience had someone immediately appealing to latch onto in case Dante's unlikable proved frustrating early on. This also allows for a more dynamic relationship between the two as Dante has to mature emotionally whereas Virgil is already emotionally mature. Virgil is stronger than Dante. If there's one thing Devil May Cry 5 proves is that Virgil really does beat Dante when it comes to pure power. Of the two, Virgil is the stronger twin. Dedicating his entire life to philosophy of strength, time and time again Virgil proves his strength over his brother, besting him multiple times between all five games. Of course, Dante wins in the end with the exception of Devil May Cry 5, but that's mostly because of Dante's own abilities and not Virgil's lack of strength when it comes to power. Virgil can overpower Dante reliably. Keep in mind that Virgil nearly killed Dante during the first fight in Devil May Cry 1. Virgil is less skilled than Dante. All that said, the reason Virgil keeps on losing is because Dante is far more of the skilled fighter. Even in Devil May Cry 5, the only reason Dante doesn't beat Virgil is because he had to fight all three of these familiars beforehand. Dante is an all-around more adapt fighter while better stamina and keenant ability to grow. This isn't easy to say, Virgil isn't skilled, as Devil May Cry 3 shows, he's able to more or less match Dante when it comes to other weapons. The key difference is that Virgil doesn't really bother changing up his kit. Keeping him stagnant, Dante, on the other hand, swaps out his weaponry for every single job he takes. He wasn't kidding. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. will always be known first and foremost for its video games, and secondly for its literally spin-offs. More than anything else, Devil May Cry is a franchise that expands its lore throughout literature. Just about every single game in the series has some companion novel to fill in the blanks, and they've only been getting more in-depth with each game, according to one of the series' side novels, But Wait, who exactly is Gilva?
It all begins in Double May Cry, Volume 1. A mysteriously bandaged man sporting a green suit. He's looking to join a popular group of mercenaries. He even goes as far as killing a homeless man, looking for information on him to keep it a secret. Gilva is initiated into the group after picking a fight with Tony Redgrave, which eventually becomes a vodka drinking contest. Unlike Tony, Gilva can't hold his liquor and passes out nearly immediately and gets mugged because of Guild's tradition. Whoever passes out first must pay for the drinks. Understandably, Gilva expresses his dislike for alcohol for the rest of the novel. Although older than his DMC3 incarnation, he still retains his chilling and calm attitude. It is stated that his stare would even give the meanest of men goosebumps. However, everyone envies his extraordinary strength and skill with his slim katana. He took on any high paying jobs, unlike Tony, and would pay for drinks at Bobby Cellar, which is the novel's The Hangout Bar for Mercenaries. When he returned from his jobs, thus earning him quite a reputation even though he was taking all the good jobs away from them. This generosity was a clever ruse, as by earning the trust of the guild, he then proceeded to feed them to the demons he released after slowly but surely unleashing the raft of the underworld back onto the human world. His evil scheme was to allow the darkness to distort and manifest all of the human world so that he could release his true dynamic powers. He was able to read his brother's fighting style even after the sword his brother wielded had awakened. Gilva tried to cut out Dante's heart, but he failed, thanks to the mother's amulet. He's fatally wounded after Dante opens fire on him with his new guns, ebony and ivory. It is then that the bandages covering his face fall off, revealing to his little brother that his opponent is his own twin, Virgil. He then fades away along with the demonic power that tried to consume the human world a second time. Also penned by the series' main writer, Virgil used the alias Gilver to hunt demons and work alongside Dante prior to the events of Devil May Cry. It's an interesting way to depict Virgil's character, especially since Gilver exists somewhere between the character's original depiction and his Devil May Cry 3 portrayal. Virgil is semi-playable in DMC5's code. Data mining is just a natural part of video game disclosure these days, and it only makes sense that a major release would strip bare the moment fans got the chance to dig their hands into some code. Sometimes, data mining leads to revelations such as the fact that Virgil has a playable model within the code of the game. That said, this isn't proof of DLC, nor is it proof that Virgil was intended to be fully playable. Lady is actually playable in Devil May Cry 3's code, but she wasn't playable in said game or in special edition release. Dante and Virgil, not so identical twins. Up to at least Devil May Cry 4, the idea was that Dante and Virgil were identical twins. They share a character model in Devil May Cry and the same in Devil May Cry 3. Up to at least Devil May Cry 4, the idea was that Dante and Virgil were identical twins. They share a character model in Devil May Cry and the same facial model in Devil May Cry 3. With 4 special editions, Virgil retained his DMC3 look, whereas Dante was aged up to match the series' timeline. Come Devil May Cry 5, it seems that this is the approach Capcom is taking with the twins. Dante looks older, Virgil looks younger, and the two very blatantly no longer share a face model. Time simply aged Dante a bit worse, but it's worth noting that all these two identical twins are anything but nowadays. Well, there you have it guys. That is top 10 things about Virgil that you did not know. 
the next video would definitely be talking about Sparta and the power sealed within three swords that seem to be lost. Or so they say, two have been found, but one is missing. As always, this has been Rizora, and thank you for watching.